Hi. On several previous occasions, we've talked about PCCs, that's pistol caliber carbine, a carbine that would shoot ammunition that would typically be a pistol caliber like 9x19, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP, 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, the list goes on. Also on previous occasions, we've talked about the advantages and disadvantages of having a rifle and a handgun of the same caliber. And yes, bear with me if I use the term rifle and carbine interchangeably. So we don't have to rehash all of that today but I will give you a short version of it. There are several advantages to having a rifle and handgun of the same caliber, but I want to discuss primarily two of them. One being that you can use the same cartridge belt, the same cartridge loops, the same ammo pouches, and depending on what firearms you have, the same magazines. Now the question comes up, if you have a handgun of a certain caliber, why would you bother to have a rifle that's the same caliber? That brings me to the second point which is not always, but most of the time, the longer barrel of the carbine will give you more power out of the same cartridge. And not always, but most people can shoot the rifle more accurately than they can the pistol. But there are also some disadvantages to having a rifle and pistol of the same caliber. One of those is a lack of diversity, such as if you're hunting deer with your 44 Magnum rifle and you have your 44 Magnum revolver, and then you see a rabbit you want to shoot, you end up shooting it with a 44 Magnum, damaging a lot of meat. Perhaps you would have been better served to have your 44 Magnum rifle and a 22 pistol. And that brings us to today's topic, which is, if you're going to have a rifle and a handgun, whether they're the same caliber or different calibers, what are some good combinations to have? Well, I can't make any recommendations because I don't know your capabilities and limitations, I don't know your budget, I don't know what it is you're trying to accomplish, or the conditions under which you're trying to accomplish it, and I don't know your local laws. But I can show you some of my favorite combinations. So today will be my top five rifle and pistol combos. Let's take a look at the first one. Now these won't be in any particular order, but number one on my list is a combination that will not surprise anyone. That's my A1 rifle backed up by my Beretta 92FS pistol. And yes, this is an A1 rifle, it just has A2 handguards on it. Now, people will ask, why would I still use this antiquated version of an AR platform? There's several reasons. First, the 20-inch barrel will give me a little more power than the 16-inch barrel that a lot of more modern versions have. And the longer barrel gives me a longer sighting plane that my eyes can focus on a little better than the shorter sighting plane. And I really don't like to use the optics. I really do like to use the peep sights. One other reason is that by textbook, the A1 weighs 6.5 pounds. The A2 weighs 7.9 pounds. 1.4 pounds less, that can be a real plus. Now, as far as the pistol, the Beretta 92FS 9x19 is a pistol that I've worked with a lot. It's extremely reliable. It's extremely accurate. And as I've said before, you go with what you know. Now, let's take a look at another combo that, again, won't surprise anybody. Next on my list is my Ruger 1022, backed up by my Beretta M922. This is virtually identical to the 92FS. The controls are the same, disassembly and reassembly is the same, but instead of being a 9x19 with a 15-shot magazine, it's a 22 long rifle with a 15-shot magazine. Now, a lot of people have asked about the peep sight on my 1022. Let's take a close-up look at it. This peep sight is made for a Thompson Center Hawken muzzle-loading rifle. I attached it to the 1022 with wood screws, and because it wasn't at the right angle, I shimmed it into place with duct tape. And it adjusts for elevation and windage with a small Allen wrench. So how accurate will this rifle be with this peep sight? Well, I'll go back 25 yards, and I'll shoot the target on your left with the 1022, and then I'll shoot the target on your right with the M922, and we'll see how accurate the rifle is with the peep sight and how the rifle compares to the pistol. So with the rifle, we see a pretty good group. And that one that's low, that's a flyer, that's just me, and yes, that is very annoying. With the pistol, we see an okay group, but not nearly as good as the rifle, and not as fast. Now my third combination, which I'll call 3A, still has the 1022, but with a different handgun. 
When I'm hunting really serious big game like jackrabbits, I'll use the 1022, but there may be targets of opportunity that will require a more powerful firearm. So I'll back this up with my Smith & Wesson Model 2944 Magnum. And it will have a slightly different effect on the targets. Let's see if we can demonstrate that. Now it may have looked like there wasn't that much difference between the two, but this was shot with the 22, this with the 44, there's a significant amount of difference. Now I said that was combo 3A, 3B would be the 1022, but backed up with my Smith & Wesson model 686 caliber 357 Magnum, which has a similar effect on the soda jugs. Okay, that was fun, but now it's time to talk about something serious. And I'm going to talk specifically about deer hunting, but this can be applied to other types of hunting as well. When I hunt deer, there's several different rifles I use, but my main go-to rifle is this Marlin Model 444S in caliber 444 Marlin. When I hunt deer with it, I'm typically using my hand loads, which are a Hornady 240 grain XTP jacketed hollow point, which can be propelled out of this rifle at a velocity of about 2400 feet per second. This rifle has a capacity of 5 plus 1. I typically just load the tube with 5 and then put around in the chamber when I leave camp. And I'll carry in the cartridge loops in my pocket about six extra rounds. How many times can you shoot a deer? And I'll back that up with my Sig Sauer M17 caliber 9x19. When I bought this pistol, it came with two 17-shot magazines, and I've bought 21-shot magazines for it, and that's what's in it right now. Now, why would I carry a handgun while deer hunting, and why would I carry this particular handgun? There's several reasons, and I want to discuss three of them. One, when I shoot a deer with that 444, the most common result I get is he falls over dead right in his tracks. Even if they make it 15 or 20 meters, they still die very quickly. But not always. And especially if I'm using a rifle that isn't as powerful, sometimes you come up to a deer and he's down, but he's not dead, and you have to do the humane thing of dispatching the deer. Now, I could easily do that with the rifle. However, in the state that I live in, the law requires that you keep that deer's head intact, not scattered all over the countryside. So rather than shooting it with a rifle, I'll shoot it with a handgun. That's effective, that's humane, and doesn't create such disarray. Okay, but with that, you might think you could easily do that with a 22, and you could. However, in the state that I live in, if you have a general rifle season tag, it is legal to hunt with a handgun, but it must be a centerfire handgun. I would technically be violating the law to shoot the deer with a 22. Not only that, sometimes we'll shoot the handgun as a signal to other hunters in my party, and I'll shoot a specific number of shots in a specific sequence, kind of like Morse code, to let the other people in my party know that I have a deer down. And the 9mm is louder than a 22, and so it can make a better signal. Okay, now that makes sense. But you might think, why would I carry a high capacity 9 when I could do all of that with my Airweight 38 Special? This is a topic that I do not like discussing, but I think it's relevant. So let me tell you an anecdote. I was not hunting, I was out camping, and I was carrying a holstered handgun, not this one. And I was camping by myself, and I leave my camp, and I'm walking down a one-lane road through the forest, and this is national forest, public land, perfectly legal. And I hear a vehicle coming up behind me, so as I'm walking, I just move over a little bit so he can go by. And I can hear the vehicle slow down, and I look, and it's somebody in a pickup. And I can tell he's going to interact with me. Okay, and he pulls up next to me, and he says something to me that sounded like he was asking, how you doing? So I don't remember my exact words, but it was something like having a great day. No, what he had asked was, what are you doing? And so when I didn't respond to what he had asked, he got visibly perturbed. And he says, no, what are you doing? I'm walking down the road. And then he got on what I would call the verge of open hostility. And he says to me, no, what are you doing? And I turned to him, and I'm not trying to be funny, I really don't remember my exact words, but I turned to him, and then I can see this is the first time he's noticed the holstered handgun, and I said something to the effect of, well, one thing I'm doing is minding my own business. And that disarmed him. 
Not only did he see that I was armed, but I think it communicated to him that I wasn't the helpless old man he had perceived. And he changes his tune and starts, no, no, I was just saying hi. Okay, hi. And I watch as he drives off. I have no idea what his motivation was or what his end game was, but I know two things. One, he was up to no good, and two, he was trying to force a confrontation with me. Now, if I were to give anybody any advice, it would be, in a situation like that, first and foremost, get out of that situation. As soon as he said, what are you doing, my response should have been something like, I'm walking away from you, and then turn around and leave. But because of the circumstance and the lay of the land at that particular moment, that wasn't an option open to me. Now, the point here is that I could bore you for a couple of hours with anecdotes like that. And unfortunately, a couple of those anecdotes end with me being unable to get out of that situation and being forced to shoot. And so because of things like that, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life hiding in my home, such as people die in car accidents, that doesn't mean I'm going to quit driving a car, but it does mean that I'm going to pay attention and wear my seatbelt. And that's why when I'm out deer hunting, especially if I'm by myself and I often am, I'm going to carry my deer hunting rifle and I'm going to back it up with a high capacity pistol and several extra magazines. I've talked about jackrabbit hunting and when we hunt jackrabbits, we're typically walking several miles through rolling hills of sagebrush. And so a firearm I purchased specifically for that is the Stoger Uplander double-barreled 20 gauge shotgun. I found with the right ammunition choices, 20 gauge is sufficient for jackrabbits. And with the right ammunition choices, 20 gauge ammo is a lot lighter than 12 gauge. And that's nice when you're walking several miles. When I'm shooting jackrabbits, they're typically running this way and that at close range. But sometimes you will see a jackrabbit sitting still at a range that greatly exceeds the maximum effective range of this 20 gauge shotgun. So I back it up with my Ruger 5.7 caliber 5.7 by 28 with a 20 shot magazine. That's good for engaging targets that are too far away for the shotgun, and I also carry it for the exact same reason that I carry the M17 while deer hunting. So I've got some targets set up here and we'll shoot them. Now I call these zombie Bigfoot targets. They're from Birchwood Casey and they're technically called the Darkotic Target. Contrary to what's been suggested, these are not called the Jim's ex-wife target. But let's go back about 20 yards and shoot them. So not too bad. Now let's recap our top five. One, the A1 platform rifle backed up by the Beretta 92FS and caliber 9x19. Two, the Ruger 1022 backed up by the Beretta M922. 3A, the Ruger 1022 backed up by the Smith & Wesson Model 2944 Magnum. 3B, the 1022 backed up by the Smith & Wesson 686-6357 Magnum. Four, the Marlin 444S and caliber 444 Marlin backed up by the Sig Sauer M17 in 9x19. And five, our Stoger Uplander 20 gauge double barrel backed up by the Ruger 57, which is not only high capacity and long range, but both the ammunition and the gun are light. So remember, these are not recommendations. These are just the guns I like. And as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the top five rifle and pistol combo video.